welcome back to the channel guys so this video is called the 10 wwe wrestlers who took their wrestling gimmick to an unprecedented real level now i can make fun of all these wrestlers all i want to i mean they spent 365 odd days uh being this character so at some point it's gonna ooze into they, who they are but i can't make too much fun of them i remember when i was in grade school and this was during the math class i thought i was the people's champ the rock honestly this really happened the teacher asks us hey question number two what is two plus two who wants to answer that and i think that was a different question but let's just say that for this and i raised my hand and the teacher's like hey okay well you got the answer for tonight number two you seem enthusiastic what's the answer to number two and i'm like oh two plus two the answer for two plus two is four miss johnson you're jabroni she's like all right you, you gotta go we can't we can't be we've been doing this for two and a half weeks you've been doing wrestling gimmicks to, for two and a half weeks you gotta go i'm calling your parents right now and i got so much trouble man for calling a, a, a teacher jabroni don't don't do that at school kids please don't do that but anyways let's get into this video let's go now, there have been some iconic characters throughout wrestling history but what stands out is when a wrestler is so devoted to their fictional persona that they take their character to the next level the wrestler will do everything in their <laughs> power to make that. fans believe that the character is who they genuinely are in real life, and sometimes wrestlers go beyond what is expected to make this work. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers who took their role to an unprecedented level. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our on wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Gangrel. And one of the most popular characters he in the Attitude Era was Gangrel. He was a gothic, mysterious vampire who joined forces Rude. with Edge and Christian to form the Brood. Whilst Gangrel never reached main event level status in WWE, his persona yeah. is still fondly remembered over two decades after Gangrel's initial debut. And Gangrel is still consistently booked as the persona, which is a credit to his devotion and passion to the character. Gangrel was so dedicated to making the character work that he actually had fangs implanted into his mouth. This was an insane thing for oh. Gangrel to do, and it's crazy to think that he actually went through with the real life altering cosmetic change. Number 9, Those are Danhausen. Real? The Danhausen character has been one of the more interesting characters that has surfaced. Wait a minute, hold on. This says WWE wrestlers. Why is Danhausen in this list? Okay. Uh, hey, let's keep going. Past few years. Dan Housen likes to describe the character as Conan O'Brien possessed by a demon. One of the things that made the character yeah, work is does. how Dan Housen outright refuses to deviate in any way, shape, or form from the character. Whenever he makes any form of public appearances, he will sport the full makeup and keep every inch of his character's credibility intact. This can even be seen on the popular YouTube series Ethan Page's Toy Hunt. Dan Housen regularly features on the show and always remains in character, even in a setting such as a toy store. Number eight. The I remember I met him at C2E2 in Chicago and he called me Preston Haas. I feel great. <laughs> I feel great that day. The Ultimate Warrior. Whilst it is traditionally celebrated when the wrestler goes the extra mile with their character, sometimes they can go too far. This was arguably the case with the Ultimate Warrior. Warrior was a colorful personality in the 80s, but Warrior notoriously struggled to separate his fictional WWE persona from who he actually was. So much so that in 1993, Warrior did the unthinkable, and he changed his name legally to Warrior. This was a decision what? which was criticized at the time as there was concerns that Warrior had completely broken down the barriers between fiction and reality. The Warrior name would later be used as surnames for his children, and the Warrior name was something of the man behind the character Jim Helwig took immense pride in taking ownership of. Now oh, some say that this was a legal tactic, dedication. as if Warrior changed his name legally to Warrior, he would own the Ultimate Warrior trademark, which belonged to WWE. Oh. However, that didn't work out. Number 7, <laughs> Kane. But when the Kane character... It's not, not funny. RP to Ultimate Warrior, first and foremost. If he did it for that legal... The, it's the picture of R-Truth and Vince McMahon is really what made me laugh. It's like, I wasn't going to laugh at that, but that's... If he tried to do that for legal reasons and it didn't work and he couldn't change it back, that's that's pretty messed up. But RIP to him again. To first debuted in WWE in 1997, nobody could have ever predicted just how successful the character would become. For over two decades, the character has been cemented as an iconic persona and has managed to remain relevant throughout multiple eras in WWE. Even though in later years, Kane would distance himself from the character, both from an on-screen perspective and a real-life perspective, the Kane character was a persona that Glenn Jacobs seemingly devoted his life oh to. God. 
Upon Kane's debut and throughout the Attitude Era, Kane would do everything in his power to keep the mystery behind his character intact, so much so that Kane would wear his mask at all times during public appearances and even when leaving the arena. This is why it was such a huge deal when Kane eventually unmasked in 2003, as there was a portion of the audience who genuinely didn't know what Kane looked like. Kane also took the character one step further in 2006. Upon Kane's horror movie being released, that being the infamous See No Evil movie, Kane had to attend several media appearances, which wasn't common for him in the slightest. Kane did every interview and every appearance completely in character. It was an unbelievable commitment, but it actually worked and got the wider audience talking about the sinister character known as Kane. The former champion would even attend the premiere of his movie in full WWE attire. Thankfully, these images are still heavily distributed on social media, so there's always a constant reminder of how much Kane valued and cared about being The Undertaker's demonic half-brother. Number 6 Is it? I mean, I don't know if they call it un unprecedented. I mean, there's some luchadors who wear their mask everywhere they go, regardless, out in public. I mean, depending on how big they are. But just to have or just to kind of integrate that into who, who they are. They wear that mask and where to go. So, I, I mean, I get it at the time, maybe, but it's not that crazy. Bray Wyatt One of the most gifted wrestlers who have received a popularity of the past decade has been Bray Wyatt. Wyatt is incredibly Wyatt, gifted man. from a creative aspect, as his character work is some of the finest ever seen in WWE. Wyatt is constantly thinking of new ways to approach his character, and this has truly resonated with fans. And it's apparent how much care and love Wyatt has for his personas that he creates. This was evident in 2012 when Wyatt did jury service as the Bray Wyatt persona. This no was the idea way. of Dusty Rhodes who believed it will help Wyatt connect with the persona, and it worked <laughs> wonders for Wyatt as he slowly evolved into the unusual character fans know and love. What makes Wyatt stand out is how his passion and love comes through in his art. When he was shockingly released from WWE in 2021, Wyatt still kept the characters he created in motion. This was a smart move as when Wyatt eventually returned to WWE in 2022, his new characters had a ton of easter eggs and continuity points thanks to Wyatt's devotion to his character. Number 5. Chris Jericho Chris Jericho has made a career out of reinvention. This was especially the case in 2008 when Jericho turned heel and started wearing a suit. Jericho would ditch the rock star esque persona and would begin to talk slowly, and he would become a character with much more subtlety, yet his work was tremendous. Some fans may argue that this was the finest work of Jericho's entire career, and it's hard to argue really? against them. One of the reasons that the character worked so well was that Jericho remained in character all the time. Whenever he was in public, he would outright refuse to stop for fans to sign autographs, as it wasn't who he was anymore. Jericho wanted to literally become the hateful character in real life. This was unthinkable at the time, and it was extremely rare for a wrestler to be this committed to a character. According to Jericho, people were so <laughs> angered that he evolved into this villain that he was actually attacked in public due to how much fans loathed him as a person. Jericho yeah. would discuss his heel character during an appearance on WrestleZone Radio, and the inaugural Undisputed Champion stated, I, I could kind of redefine what it is to be a heel in the WWE, and I'm not saying that egotistically, I'm saying as a matter of fact, if you go and look at the three or four months preceding that heel turn, Nobody was doing what I was doing, and that's why I worked. You know, really committed to it, and uh, people thought it was real. They thought, you know, people were attacking me on the streets. It happened in Victoria, what? It happened in South Carolina, it happened in Las Vegas. Uh, when you get that sort of reaction, you know that you're doing something, uh, something right. Number four. Yeah, when everybody trying to fight you everywhere you go, it sounds like the the Warriors movie from back in the day. But like it, that that's I like that because. Now, especially nowadays, whatever you know, all these articles and wrestling outlets online and things like that. You know, part of the fun of watching wrestling growing up is a mystique and not understanding or not being able to separate the character from the person in the ring. I mean, from the person outside of the ring, which as adults, we know that this is these are people playing characters, playing gimmicks and so on and so forth. But to continue to do that and have people genuinely hate you. So then that hate outside of the ring translates to who you are in the ring or on the mic or whatever. I think that works. I, I like that. Now, it may not be safe. I, I'm not, you know. Hey, you may get stabbed. Mary po Ma Maury Povich, not Mary Povich. Who is it? The guy from Cheaters. The guy from Cheaters who got stabbed. That may happen to you. You might get jumped like he did in Victoria. You may got beat, may get beat up, but hey, it all depends on how much you want to dedicate yourself to that craft. And yeah. For MJF. Now, it can be heavily argued that kayfabe is a lost star, but MJF clearly- Again, this says WWE wrestlers who took- I'm not mad at this, but I'm confused. You never got the memo. MGF's character on screen is the exact same persona fans will encounter in public, at a range meet and greets, and in any media interview. MGF has taken the character to the next level by devoting yeah, every sure, minute man. of every day to his fictional persona. 
This has worked wonders for MJF's popularity, as MJF's meet and greets are notoriously sold out. Whilst most wrestlers deviate away from their persona for meet and greets to give fans a special moment, MJF refuses to do this. He'll insult anyone and it doesn't matter who he offends or how much controversy he causes. It'll be interesting to see if MJF eventually joins WWE and if this character dedication will remain in motion or MJF will be forced to scale back the character due to WWE's PG guidelines. Number 3 This list must be old. There is no... <laughs> but he's going to have to scale back because he can't do what he did last week. He can't... Or, or, or uh, in his promo with Daniel Bryan, he can't come to WWE crowd and call somebody a fat, fat skank. Like, you can't just do that, man. Rey Mysterio When Rey Mysterio signed with WWE in 2002, he wasn't initially going to debut with the mask. Mysterio had previously lost his mask during his final year as a WCW, but Vince McMahon insisted he wanted a mask Mysterio in WWE. This was a smart move as the Mysterio mask became popular with fans and continues to be a huge top seller for WWE even 20 years after Mysterio's debut. Mysterio for the past two decades has tried to keep his identity hidden by wearing the iconic mask at all yeah, times. Yeah, this is what I was talking about during the, any the setting thing. in which Mysterio could be seen by the public, Mysterio will be sporting his mask and he outright refuses to make any exceptions to this rule. Due to him needing a new mask seemingly on a daily basis, Mysterio has admitted that he has over a thousand masks in his collection. I'm and not he doesn't surprised. Like to wear the same one twice. This is an expensive dedication to the art of kayfabe, and one fans have to appreciate. Number two, Goldust. The Goldust character was initially supposed to be an androgynous character. Yet the character evolved into so much more. The character <laughs> was way ahead of its time, and the devotion to pulling the character off in the 90s should have been applauded. During the Attitude Era, the character was beginning to get stale and this was when Goldust pitched an idea to WWE. He was going to go under the knife and receive breast implants. Goldust believed what? that this would breathe new life into his character and would make fans want to see him wrestle. The crazy idea was eventually shot down but it highlighted the ownership Goldust took over the persona and how he was willing to do whatever it took to make it memorable. And That's number the one, man. The Undertaker. It's hard to argue against the opinion that The Undertaker is the greatest character in wrestling history. For 30 years, the dead man devoted his entire life to WWE as well as a fictional persona known as The Undertaker. Taker never once broke away from his character and this successfully managed to keep the integrity, credibility and mystique behind the character embedded into the fabric of pop culture. Following Taker's retirement in 2020, he made the decision to put aside the persona and let fans explore the man behind the character. For the past two years, the dead man has taken part in out-of-character interviews and made public appearances and even let fans meet him for the first time in his career. While some were critical of Taker's decision to finally break kayfabe, the dead man finally gave fans and the wrestling industry 30 years of dedication. And now it was time for fans to truly get to know who Mark Calloway was. But there you have it folks, 10 wrestlers who took their role. Yeah, pretty interesting list there. Um, Again, I, I don't know why Dan Haas and MJF was in there, but I'm not upset about that at all but you know mjf if he's ever made an appearance in wwe and i didn't know about it maybe by technicality it makes sense for him to be on this list but yeah it's pre pretty interesting the gold dust one is the craziest one that to get breast implants for people to see you as a wrestler more i don't know man because then what if that didn't work then you're like stuck in real life with these implants but if he's okay with having them and walking around with them every day and things like that then i guess that's fine but, it, but you know People are doing that nowadays anyways. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. Salute.